There's a myth going round town that when you get older you just sit down and start rocking. Just rocking. In a way that's true, if you know what I mean. Just take a look at the senior scene. Well, it's rocking. Good afternoon. Thanks for your patience. I'm Ann Weston. I'm a member of the senior resource team at the Orange County Department of Aging um, that looks into end of life concerns. And today, we've got a talk called VSED, Voluntary Stopping of Eating and Drinking. As modern technology prolongs our lives, a life well lived can often end with a long and painful struggle. Increasingly, there are choices available about end of life options that afford greater personal control over the time and manner of our deaths. That good death is more likely when medical practitioners and those supporting the dying person are more informed about these options. The Project Engage End of Life Choices Senior Resource Team proudly hosts Elliot and Susan Schaefer for a discussion of the medical, ethical, and legal issues involved in VSED, Voluntary Stopping of Eating and Drinking, a little-known end-of-life option. They will share with us the end-of-life story of Susan's mother, a resident of a retirement community in New Jersey. Elliot Schaefer, MD, is a retired geriatrician who was formerly the medical director at Martin's Run Life Care Community in Media, Pennsylvania. Susan Schaefer, JD, is a retired attorney who was formerly senior counsel at AstraZeneca Pharmaceuticals. And now, the Schaefers. VSED, or VSED, stands for Voluntary Stopping of Eating and Drinking. It's one of the several end-of-life choices for a competent person with a terminal illness. In 2009, my mother was diagnosed with oral cancer. She received a painful course of radiation and chemotherapy. The treatment was unsuccessful, and she was faced with the final and very painful stages of her disease. I wrote an article about her end-of-life decision, and I would like to read a portion of it. After Labor Day, we learned that the treatment had not worked. The cancer had spread, and mom's life expectancy was now measured in months. It was the only time throughout the ordeal that I saw mom cry. She told me that she was not afraid to die, but she was afraid of the pain and suffering to come. She wanted to be in control of her life and was thinking about whether she could just stop eating, but feared it would be just as painful. I felt torn, wanting to hang on to every remaining minute of her time with us but understanding her dilemma. I suggested that she discuss her options with my husband, Elliot, a family doctor and geriatrician. Mom and Elliot had a long talk, and Elliot shared information with her about people who forego food and water, that not only do they not experience increased pain or hunger, but in fact, Generally, these people enjoy a, pain, a peaceful death with little or no suffering. Mom decided that this was the course she wanted to take, but she was not yet ready to stop taking nourishment just yet. Once Mom's closest friends and family heard about her prognosis, they all arranged to visit her. She quietly and individually met with her brother and each of her six grandchildren. She smiled as her great-grandsons rolled around on her bed. The morning after saying her final goodbyes to her loved ones, Mom quietly informed her daughters that she was ready to stop eating and drinking. Her choice itself was not a surprise, but the timing was a shock. We quickly arranged for one of us or an aide to be with her at all times, expecting her strength to fail precipitously. Each morning, I would approach her apartment with trepidation, wondering how much closer to death Mom had traveled overnight. Amazingly, I found that each day Mom's spirits grew lighter and more peaceful. There was an immediate and dramatic change the day after Mom made her choice. 
It was as if she realized that she no longer had to struggle, that she had taken control, and she found comfort in that. The stream of friends and family continued, and mom would doze lightly between visits. She was also, she, she was always cheerful during these visits, nostalgic about her life and relationships, and open to discuss her decision, which almost everyone found somewhat shocking. At the end of the first week, mom was so comfortable that she wondered, when is something going to happen? We assured her that it generally takes no more than two weeks for a body to slip away without food and water. Mom continued to deny any hunger. She did express appreciation for the few sips of water that she took with her pain medication. We soothed her dry mouth with a spray that helped replace saliva, and that seemed to comfort her. At no time in the days that passed did Mom appear to be suffering. She lived those last days with a tremendous grace that touched everyone who was privileged to spend time with her. We talked about death. She was clearly not afraid of dying. She frequently smiled and acknowledged what a good life she had lived. Mom expressed curiosity about what she would experience after death and whether she would see her parents or my father, but then quickly dismissed her curiosity with a cheerful acceptance of her fate. On day 11, Mom became less responsive. On day 12, she peacefully slipped away. Mom taught us much at her life's end, and particularly in those last 12 days. Witnessing her grace, her humor, her wisdom, and her compassion for all whom she touched in the extraordinary circumstances of her passing was an experience that I will never forget. Seeing her take control of her death, much as she had of her life, was empowering to everyone who was with her and who heard of the circumstances of her death. I am so proud to be her daughter. I received more than 200 emails after this article was published in the Philadelphia Inquirer. Most of 99% of the emails expressed gratitude for the information about VZ. Many were from people with cancer or other terminal illnesses who stated that they had not been aware of this option and planned to speak with their physician about it. Many were from people who had witnessed the painful and undignified death of a friend or loved one and harbored a strong fear of having to face a similar fate who now expressed a strong sense of relief that there was another option. Another remarkable thing was the reaction of physicians who read the article. Numerous physicians disclosed to us that they had absolutely no idea that this was a practical option at the end of life. From what I have read and heard from family members whose loved ones died, of loved ones who died using VSED, my mother's experience is similar to others who have hastened death through the use of VSED, but the process of sharing my mother's story revealed a dramatic lack of information about VSED among both the patient population and the medical community. I have read an interesting fact about VSED. Even in states where medical aid in dying or physician-assisted suicide is legal, VSED is chosen twice as often. Why is that? Well, I have some ideas of why this might be true. It is a less violent or more gentle way of dying than taking a lethal medication. The slower process with VSED permits reconciliation and healing goodbyes with loved ones. But perhaps most important is the issue of control. Death by VSED occurs over days. It is an incremental and reversible decision. In other words, the patient has control throughout the entire process. Control as to whether to initiate VSED, control as to when to initiate VSED, 
and control as to whether to continue VSAT. Interestingly, it's reported that just the knowledge that VSAT is an available option often gives the patient a sense of control, even if they never choose to initiate it. Control exists in the knowledge that when life's burdens consistently outweigh the benefits, there is a way to exit gracefully. Many people, like my mother, are not afraid of death but are afraid of the suffering caused by the progression of a terminal disease. There have been many advances in palliative care in recent years, but it is not a panacea. VSAD allows for a more independent and potentially more meaningful death experience for the patient and the family. It is very compatible with dying at home for many reasons but especially because it is not at all dependent on technology. And now Elliot will discuss the physiology and the logistics of these set. So, what is the definition of voluntary stopping of eating and drinking? VSED or VSED? VSED is described as an action of a competent, capacitated person who voluntarily and deliberately chooses to stop eating and drinking with the primary intention to hasten death because unacceptable suffering persists. VSAD is distinct from a situation where there is a loss of appetite or thirst that is often a natural part of the dying process. The emphasis in the definition of VSAD is that it is intentional. Why would a person choose VSAD as an end of life option? When quality of life significantly diminishes, some of us prefer to hasten death, or in other words, not prolong life. This is the same reason that many of us have signed advanced directives or living wills. What amounts to a poor quality of life is a very personal decision. For one person, it might be inability to communicate. For another person, extreme physical suffering, being a burden to loved ones, loss of independence, loss of bodily functions, lack of consciousness. But when the burdens of life consistently outweigh all of the benefits, some people are looking for a gentle way to exit life. Susan's mother is an excellent example of a patient for whom V said is an option that be, should be available. Susan's mother was a healthy, vibrant, intelligent, active 88-year-old woman who was diagnosed with metastatic cancer of the jaw. She completed an arduous, painful course of chemo and radiation therapy and found out that it had not worked and there were no other options for a potential cure. She already suffered from a steady but increasing pain, which required continuous narcotics and was only going to get worse. And a noticeable mass in her lower right jaw was rapidly growing <clears throat> and over a couple of months would start to close off her windpipe and make swallowing impossible. And so after settling her affairs with family, she stopped eating and drinking. The thought of dying in any situation raises questions, fears, and emotional confusion. But the idea of causing death on purpose by starvation and dehydration certainly provokes images of suffering and pain. There are many images associated with dying by starvation and dehydration, such as TV commercials of small children starving in poor third world countries. And we can all see the image of a person lost in a hot desert, crawling along in severe agony with skin and lips parched and cracking. These are just a couple of images associated with dying as a result of starvation and dehydration. Many people, including physicians and professional caregivers, 
think that V said would cause significant pain and suffering. It is important to note that these images of dying invariably are about people who are in adverse situations, who do not want to die and are struggling to stay alive. There is a tremendous psychological component to their suffering. In contrast, V said is used by people who are at the end of their life and have accepted that fact. They have voluntarily chosen to maintain control of their life and dying process. And what clinical experience confirms is that in reality, V said as a means of hastening death can actually allow a person to die with less pain and suffering. So now let's talk briefly about the physiology of VSED. There are two aspects to VSED. Stopping all food, which causes starvation, and stopping all liquids, which causes dehydration. In VSED, death occurs as a result of dehydration. For most people within seven to 21 days, but usually in less than two weeks. This depends on multiple factors, including other illnesses, the strength and state of nutrition and hydration of the individual. Of course, the detailed metabolic description of starvation and dehydration is quite complex, but I will simplify here. When we stop eating, starvation starts to occur. The body initially uses the stored sugars mainly from the liver and kidneys. These stored sugars are depleted in a day or two, and the body starts to burn fat for energy. The fat is converted into free fatty acids and glycerol. The free fatty acids are converted into ketones, and the glycerol is converted into sugar. Eventually, in the starving person, the body also starts to break down muscle for energy, but that does not happen for a month and so is not directly relevant to VSED. A few things happen as a result of this ketosis which develops from the metabolism of the free fatty acids. One, the ketosis, possibly in association with the release of endorphins, causes a euphoric, peaceful state, but the person remains alert. Two, the ketosis suppresses the feeling of hunger. This is one of the reasons that absolutely no food should be eaten. If the person eats even a little food, the ketosis could be reversed and the person will feel hungry all over again. And three, there is a metabolic acidosis. The body becomes mildly acidic and to compensate, the respiratory, <clears throat> the respiratory rate increases but this is not uncomfortable. Simultaneously, the body is becoming increasingly dehydrated. Humans lose water continuously through respiration, perspiration, and urination. And so when we stop drinking, we naturally get progressively more dehydrated. This results in increasing electrolyte imbalance and the accumulation of metabolic breakdown products and toxins. And as the dehydration increases, there is a progressively increasing lethargy, eventually leading to coma. Organs start to shut down and fail, and ultimately death results from an arrhythmia or irregular heartbeat, and the heart stops. There are many descriptions of people using VSED to hasten their death. It is reported that VSED does not cause significant suffering or pain and can actually make the dying process more comfortable. In one study, hospice nurses reported that patients who died using VSED showed few signs of pain and suffering, uh, two out of 10, and that the quality of their deaths was very good, eight out of 10. And our experience is in line with these uh, studies. VSED is a decision made by a competent person in order to gain more control over the dying process. 
There is no permission necessary from doctors or lawyers. <clears throat> there is no waiting period. There is no technology required. But support is important. The information gathered while learning about and discussing BSIN affords a sense of confidence and comfort, even if a person decides never to use BSIN. This serves as sort of a security blanket just knowing that the option is there if wanted or needed. Dying is hard work and thinking about it raises extremely emotional and complicated issues. So coming to the decision to use VSED is a process that should occur over time. It is essential that the person thinking about VSED understand their illness and all of the available options and treatments. It is very difficult to undertake VSED without help. The process begins by discussing end-of-life wishes and concerns with family, appropriate friends, physicians, caregivers, and clergy. A patient should consider writing down thoughts and reasons for choosing this approach. It may help clarify thoughts for oneself, as well as helping others to better understand the patient's reasoning and to follow the patient's wishes. It is easy to understand how other people might get confused about someone wanting to starve themselves to death. And so it may be difficult for family and friends to understand why a person has made this choice. And therefore, the person may experience a lack of support or understanding from friends and family, and even from professional health care providers and clergy. Many health care providers, physicians, and hospice workers may simply have no experience with VSA. People who are going to help a person through this process need to understand VSA, understand the reason for choosing VSA, and be in complete support. It would be quite unsettling for loved ones to start arguing and adding obstacles to the patient during the dying process. Someone who does not understand VSED might think that they are making it easier for the patient by suggesting that the patient slowly wean themselves off of food and drink, or by offering food and drink once VSED has started. This would just cause more distress by prolonging the process and possibly reversing the ketosis causing hunger. It is very important that the individual meet with their physician to discuss the illness, issues, values, and wishes, and make sure that the physician understands VSED and is in support of this decision. The patient does not need the physician's permission, but the support is essential. If for any reason the physician cannot support the decision, then it is necessary to ask for a referral to another physician who will support the person in their choice. Also, the physician must be willing to make a referral for hospice when appropriate. Finally, it is important to discuss with the hospice organization that you are hiring, that you are planning to use VSED, and make sure that they have the knowledge and willingness to support the plan appropriately. Now let's talk about some of the problems that could occur and what can be done to prevent and mitigate the distress. As you would expect, many, repeat, many people report thirst and hunger. Although these complaints usually resolve in a day or two, an elderly people often have a decreased or absent sensation of thirst. It is important to distinguish the sensation of thirst from having a dry mouth. The dry mouth that can persist can be alleviated with moisturizing sprays and swabs. Excellent oral care is extremely important. Lip balm should be used to prevent cracking of the lips, and oral hygiene and teeth cleaning should be continued. There should be no cooking in the house where the person is undergo using, undergoing VSED because the odors can cause dis discomfort for somebody who is not eating. In addition to excellent oral care, general palliative care is essential. 
Physical pain associated with any underlying illnesses needs to be aggressively treated with pain medications. Generally, these are narcotics, and so the involvement of a physician well-versed in pain management is also essential. And of course, the hospice workers themselves are trained to evaluate and treat pain. Support for the dying person is an integral part of the dying process, and arrangements for this 24-hour care should be made before the person starts VSEN. Hospice is usually very good in helping getting things organized and providing support, although they may not be knowledgeable about VSEN. If the patient is in a nursing home, there may be additional complications that arise from the nursing home rules and regulations, especially the Medicare regulations regarding hydration and nutrition. Another area of potential complications in a nursing home is the use of multiple caregivers on different shifts. It is difficult to assure that all of the caregivers understand and completely support the choice of VSEN. It is important that the nursing home really understands the intentions of the patient and is willing to support this option. If any doubt exists, it might be preferable for the patient to move back to their own or a family member's home to die. This end-of-life option requires a, a determined and well-informed individual with significant support in order to assure success. The option of VSET is not for everyone. For some, choosing the date to initiate VSET that will result in death requires more self-control and determination than they possess. And for others who are not able to gather sufficient support, the option is very difficult and may not be feasible. But for people who want to die as they live, making personal decisions regarding important questions in their lives, with consultation from trusted health care professionals, family, friends, and clergy, VSED is an important option to know about. We paid our dues all those years, and it's so nice to be switching gears. It's a grand new century, and it's the senior life, the senior life, the senior life for me.